You're listening to World of Empowerment Radio. Your station for practical spirituality in a changing world. And here are your hosts, Angel Rose and Ahanu. Well, you're very welcome. My name is Ahanu, and with me is my lovely Angel Rose. And today we are interviewing a man by the name of William von Holst. And he is the representative of an author whose name is Imre Valion. And he has written several books, and the one in particular we're speaking about today is The Way of the Spiritual Warrior. Right. Okay, and there is another book by that name in America, just so people know. Uh, I think by Dan Millman. So we have to be sure that they know that this is not The Way of the Spiritual Warrior by Dan Millman. This is The Way of the Spiritual Warrior by by Imri Valian. Very different. Okay, so we'll clarify that. Yeah, and he is one of the world's best-known teachers and best-selling author. And he has written for a vast audience of readers and students around the globe over the years. And this book focuses on multidimensional development of personality, soul and spirit, divinity through self-assessment, understanding of the warrior path and techniques, and study of sacred language and planetary transformation. And we will be asking him about these particular techniques during the course of our interview today. And these... uh, Techniques and, of course, the universal spiritual teachings and right knowledge are the hallmarks of Valian's life's work. And typical of his many detailed instructive books, The Way of the Spiritual Warrior is a deep resource to be dipped into over weeks, months and even a lifetime. With captivating chapters such as The Warrior and Health, The Warrior Controls Negative Emotions, From Separated Consciousness to Unity Consciousness, The Threefold Training of the Spiritual Warrior, The spiritual warrior sees God inside himself, the warrior and the feminine power, the way of the warrior is action, and the warrior transmits the energy of the spiritual kingdom. As the embodiment of and the communicator of wisdom science in the way of the spiritual warrior, Valiant leads his students and readers to the tremendous gift of the universal energy field of life force, a phenomenal resource that transforms their lives with total intelligence, consciousness, bliss, and personal power. He said, once you understand that this tremendous power is inside and all around you, everywhere in universal space, between the stars and between the atoms, then you will understand what is actually available to you in terms of your own evolution, your own growth, and your own power of becoming more. And the reason why this is so important nowadays is because of everything that we do talk about on this show and certainly the information we've received from Source and the Akashic Records that in this time of great change that we're all going through, learning about ourselves and especially the God within in a literal sense and also what we're actually doing on this planet in terms of bringing a divine plan into manifestation as beings of God is is really the work that mm-hmm. we're all yes. here to do now. And, and I think it's so easy to get distracted today with all of the, the problems and the perceived lacks mm-hmm. that we're going through economically, politically, uh, environmentally, mm-hmm. okay, that to be able to stand up, you know, and know that you have, you are a God being who came here now to actually bring this planet into really a more paradisical state. I mean, you know, we've found out from Source that Source's desire is is that all planets become paradise planets. Yes, indeed. And this gentleman and his training in the book, it's another, he's another uh, instrument on the planet that is helping to actualize all this. So we're really looking forward to this yeah. conversation today. And we will speak about those uh, retreats that uh, he mentions mm-hmm. in his book because we want to find out more about them and be able to present them to our listeners. Uh, let's just, before we bring William on to speak about this book, The Way of the Spiritual Warrior by Imre Valion, I just want to read the back cover because on there he really summarizes, I guess, what we're going to cover today. On the spiritual warrior path, you do not quit the world. You meet the world head on. 
And in that meeting, moment by moment, there is enlightenment. Mm -hmm. The art of the warrior is to be enlightened every second of every day. It's not something you look forward to in the future. It's something you live now. The warrior path is always in the immediate moment, at this second of time, in your total relationship with the outer world and the world inside you, with the divine presence within you and the divine presence outside you. It is the conjunction between the God within, the God without, and the cosmos in between. This is the way of the spiritual warrior, the spiritual path for today. Right, and it's so important because he does make the distinction between somebody who is a mystic mm. or a monk who is away from the world, yes. you know, doing their spiritual work, and a spiritual warrior who is very much an everyday person with all of their jobs and their families, and who, but who is somebody who is actively participating in doing something with the world or for the world that is uh, helping it, you know, move into that more divine presence. Yes, 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 yes. yes. They're very big, dis- that's why, that's his interpretation of a warrior. A warrior is somebody who is active in the outer world, not somebody who is um, a mystic or somebody who is withdrawn from the world. Sure. This is a warrior who's active in the world. But also has has that inner knowledge absolutely yes yeah. yes 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 it's the marriage you have to marry your soul energy with your personality in order to be functionable on yeah. that level yes in this world and yeah. that's what his trainings and teachings are all about mm-hmm. on how to achieve that it's interesting that you should say that about being active and in the doing in the outer world but once you know inside of you that god is for you and not against you then I, I believe and I understand you become invincible mm-hmm. because then you're not afraid of death in that way. You know that there's this wonderful continuum mm-hmm. and therefore the fears dissolve about being punished or being guilty of something. You jump in with both feet. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a wonderful thought, actually. We look forward to speaking to William. So let's go ahead and bring him on. Let's bring him on. Well, you're very, very welcome, William. We have Thank with you. us Angel Rose, and we're really looking forward to speaking to you about this because we feel ourselves and many of our guests in the past and many of our clients feel that they're on a, a, a spiritual path. They're, they feel that they're spiritual warriors themselves. So can you give us a bit of a background as to how you got connected with the author Imre Valion and what is this, the way of the spiritual warrior? It was 30 years ago, I was living in Chicago, and I had a dear friend who lived in Canada, and she was my spiritual teacher at the time, and she met Emery up in Canada, and called me on the telephone and said that this is a man who is very unique, who works with a spiritual hierarchy, and I knew Clistra was her name. I knew her well enough to know and trusted her well enough that indeed she said that he worked with the spiritual hierarchy. He indeed did work with the spiritual hierarchy. So I made a decision over the phone, this was 30 years ago, to attend a two-week retreat up in Canada. It was up in Salmon Arm. And I can honestly say that within the first few days, and sitting in front of Emery, and of course he was teaching, and I could feel changes in my aura, changes in my energy, and I was, what, 34 at the time, and had never um, experienced that before, even though I had many, many teachers. So I knew, indeed, this man was very unique, and was teaching from a different level than I had previously experienced. Mm -hmm. And this book, The Way of the Spiritual Warrior, is his most recent publication. And what he says is that, well, he, of course, says many things. What he's saying is that the planet is in enormous crisis. We have forces, invisible forces, forces that want to keep the status quo, that want to keep the human being limited to a very narrow spectrum And then there's forces that want the planet to change Mm -hmm. and forces that want 
a human being to really become into their full potential. So what the spiritual warrior is, is that someone who, of course, is on an inward journey, like many people, and, and I also, also could say on a side that anybody on the spiritual path is really a warrior. Right. It takes a, a, a tough being to, 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 to hold that inner energy where the world just bombards us with, with all kinds of energies and distractions and very worldly vibrations. And what Emery says, though, is that when you become a true warrior, what you're able to do is you're able to really stand in the light, meaning that you're able to bring light down from the inner levels, and in spite of all the obstacles and oppositions, you're able to, to stand here on the physical plane, in the world, and hold the light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, you mentioned that anybody on a spiritual path really is, is a spiritual warrior. But it has been our experience that it is only of late that people are beginning to come into this kind of awareness and come into this kind of realization. And do you, you, must, do you feel like a pioneer? You know, you said you met uh, Imre 30 years ago. Do you feel that you were around in those early days of that opening up of potential and opening up of possibilities? I do, and I feel, of course, very blessed that I was able to work with him 30 years ago and have worked with him exclusively ever since. I've been on retreats all over the world with him. And what, what's happening, to answer the first part of your question, what, why people are waking up at the moment more so than ever, because what is happening on the inner levels is that there's a stepping down of light, meaning that there is a, of course, light itself is divinely intelligent. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, 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 the light is from the divine itself. It's an, it's an expression of the divine. So what's happening is that there are, of course, many levels, many dimensions, and the light itself is stepping down from the very top, and it's coming down each of these dimensions and illuminating that dimension, and then moving to the dimension below it, illuminating that dimension. So what's happening, and that's part of why the planet is in such a crisis, is because the light is really stepping down into the physical plane. Some people, the fortunate people, are really able to wake up. But also what's happening, and this is also part of the process, is that there's individuals who are not able to handle this, this pressure or this intensity of the light coming down and are acting out in very, unfortunately, bizarre ways. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's part of the whole process, the light stepping down, some are opening up and, and feeling that light, and some are being pushed to very angry or violent or very aggressive ways. William, is, is this stepping down, is it something that occurs cyclically in the universe, or is this a, a very unique time? I mean, is this light coming from divine source intentionally? Or is this a result of cycles? <laughs> Excuse me. It's coming from, and this, this is what Henry teaches in some of his prior books, it's coming from the divine will itself. Mm -hmm. And it, this is a very unique position in Earth's evolution. And part of it is that, and this is what I said in the beginning, there's a spiritual hierarchy here on the planet, meaning there is this governing body who has always existed, they exist on the inner levels, they are always monitoring what is happening on the planet. Every so often, they send down from their inner levels a teacher, a really divine teacher who's connected to the inner levels. There have been many, many examples of that in the past, both male and female. There right. have been the Christ, the Buddhas, um, the Kuan Yin's, so these beings step down into the physical plane and radiate a particular energy for a particular time. And what is happening now is that this inner hierarchy or this spiritual hierarchy feels that humanity has reached a, a certain intelligence or a certain potential. And partly because everything's so speeded up, partly because there's enormous education enormous communication around the planet. So the spiritual hierarchy or that inner governing body feel that humanity is ready. Mm -hmm. And 
at the same time, this divine will has been intentionally stepping down the light to help Earth or to help humanity move on to the next level or move on to a more inner connection so that we could both be in the world, as Christ said, but not of the world. Meaning we live here in the physical body, we do what we have to do as, as, as family, as members of community, as we pay taxes, we have responsibilities, we are in the working place. And at the same time, we are able to hold that inner light, to hold our inner being, or be connected to our soul itself. Emery refers to that as that we become soul-infused personalities. And this is quite different than what's happened in the last 2,000 years. In the last 2,000 years, there's always been this separation that the people who are spiritually inclined went into monasteries or out in the, in the deserts and right. prayed to God. So that, that old kind of Piscean energy is fading away. What's happening now is that people who are spiritual can also be in the world, can have families, can be mothers and fathers and, and do all the responsibilities, but yes. also within that, that framework, hold, hold that connection to their inner being and hold that connection to the inner, inner realms. That's what the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi believed also and was one of the reasons why he was so anxious to bring transcendental meditation to the West was because he believed that this access to spirituality and that realization of God didn't have to happen in the Himalayas or in a monastery. It can actually be, as you said, mothers, fathers, um, children actually connecting and having that direct experience themselves. Exactly, and, and it's, a very, uh, it's a very mysterious time to be alive. Uh, most people reading newspapers or news and looking at the world and all looks very dark and gloomy and part of it is, but it's a very exciting time to live. And what Emery says, and I find this so beautiful, he says, you're very lucky to be alive at this moment in history, mm -hmm. meaning that there's incredible changes going on, just not here on the physical plane, but also on the inner levels. So there's an enormous possibility, an enormous potential that's just at our fingertips or just at, at a, almost within reach of becoming conscious of. And what the stepping down also means is that the walls between these inner dimensions, and there's always been thick walls, there's a thick wall between this world and the next world, which is the world where you go with your dream, the astral plane. It's also the world where most people go when they die. They, they go to the astral plane. And there's always been these thick walls between these dimensions to, to basically protect us. And part of this stepping down of the light means that these walls are becoming more and more thin mm -hmm. so that the light can move easily between these dimensions. And what that also means is that because that, that wall is becoming thinner, that there is this enormous possibility of, and this could happen within our generation, that we will actually witness the light manifesting here on the physical plane meaning there could be phenomena in the sky or transformations just in front of our eyes that we actually see with our physical eyes, not just our, our inner eyes, but that there's a whole possibility of a transformation right here on the physical plane, on the physical plane, that anyone on the physical plane will, will recognize and experience and, and be a witness to. William, do you, do you think that it's important that people understand or know about the levels of hierarchy or is that you know and maybe the beings that reside on those levels or the symbology of those levels within us do you feel that that's important right now or is at the stage that humanity is at at the moment do you, you mentioned or Emer mentions in the book about self-assessment as a first step do you feel which do you feel is the most important at this moment for people what Emily really focuses on is that when people have knowledge, and what he's referring to is true knowledge, and for Emery this is very interesting, for him spirituality is a science, it's not a faith, it's not a kind of conjecture or a, a, 
kind of a research study of what other people says, say, what, what for Emory, spirituality is a science, meaning that it's very precise, and the more you know of that preciseness, the more you're able to really understand, first of all, who you are, you understand what you're experiencing, and then when that is true, you're able to help others. So to answer your question, yes, it's very, very important to understand that a human being has many, many, many levels within, and everyone throughout their life on the spiritual path, they have glimpses of these particular qualities or dimensions or worlds. And when you really understand what you've experienced and where on the tree of life or where on these worlds or within worlds you've actually experienced something, then you have a really clear understanding of what you've experienced and what the next step is. And for most of us, really that next step is having that strong connection to the soul. Each of us, of course, is not just a, a, a being that's kind of been born miraculously and we have 70, 80, 90 years if we're lucky and then we die. What we are is this incredible immortal soul. So we've incarnated thousands of times in the past and that soul is very wise. That soul has had many, many experiences and that's all within us. That's all part of who we are. So when we discover that, that incredibly beautiful, powerful being within, then we're really able to to help others. We're really in a position, that, and that's what a spiritual warrior is. A spiritual right. warrior is someone who's really connected. They're a soul-infused personality. They have that incredible wisdom of thousands of lifetimes. Yeah. They're they're here on the physical plane. They are they have jobs, they pay taxes, they have children, they have parents, they do all the things that everyone does. Yes. But they're also has incredible knowledge and experience and wisdom because of all the experiences and the thousands of previous incarnations they all embody in their being here on the plane, on mm-hmm. the physical plane. Now, we're speaking about the author of this book, Imre Valion, and the book is The Way of the Spiritual Warrior. And he was born in Budapest. And I want to ask you, William, as his representative, would you know this answer? Does it matter where any of these spiritual warriors are born? Like, for example, he was born in Budapest. So does it follow that he might have been born on a particular ley line, for example, or in a particular uh, spiritually enhanced place that might have given him access to this kind of knowledge? Do you understand my question? Absolutely. And to answer your question, what what he does refer to that as as a, a spiritual teacher, and also as a representative from that spiritual hierarchy that I mentioned in the beginning, he was born on a partic- particular date. Okay. Meaning the stars were in a particular arrangement. He, he was born um, December 7th, so he's a Sagittarius, 1940. So the stars gave him an impulse, an energy, a, a boost, so to speak, right. so that he could really bring this, this wisdom and to ask your question a little further, he's come from prior incarnations of being in the, in the East. Yes. So he had very strong Eastern training. Mm-hmm. He was a mantric yogi, meaning that he mastered the use of sound. Right. But this was all in a very Eastern tradition. So he, and not, he wasn't necessarily, he didn't choose to come to the West. He was, as he said, he was ordered to come in into the West by the spiritual hierarchy because the spiritual hierarchy wanted the West to, to have an incredible knowledge from the East but to, or to be embodied in the West. Because mm-hmm. the West is very different than the East. The East is very singular, very isolated, very focused on the self, whereas in the West we are much more group oriented. So what the task was was that he was to bring to the West, the knowledge of the East, but that the West would become group conscious, or that a group of people would be able to embody this incredible energy from the East and bring it to the material plane, bring it to the marketplace, bring it to everyday life, so that we can really bring down the light to the physical plane. In the East, what the tendency was is that you abstracted yourself. You learned these these techniques, but you went up to your soul, you went up to the inner dimensions, and you 
hung out in these inner dimensions, but you weren't much service to the physical plane or to community or to the world. So the intent now is to really be of service to the world, help the world, help planet Earth, which is struggling enormously. And that all came from from that moment of December 7th, 1940, where the Budapest was a particular powerful place I, right. I'm not sure of, but right. definitely the time was powerful. Right, yeah, that's interesting. So, so William, in, in practical terms, can you can you give us some examples of what service on the physical plane from a soul-centered person would look like? I mean, is it just any sort of a job that you might have? Well, what it is is, that, and to, to give an example, Christ was a, a being that did this, meaning that he came from enormous interconnection. He always said, you know, my father and I are one, meaning right. that, that he was connected to the light itself. And when he was referring to his father, he was actually referring to the level above his own soul. So he was referring to these incredible worlds above our soul level when he was referring to his father. So what that means is that he was here on the physical plane, but he radiated, radiated a dynamic, powerful light energy so that when he spoke, in the Sermon on the Mount, the other uh, speaking that he did to, to, to the groups that were gathered around him, you know, in some ways the words sound very simple, you know, love thy neighbor. But what was really happening was that they were in the presence of, of the light itself, or they were in the presence of the divine being, so they're actually being transformed from within. Right. So that, that's a true teacher is that they are, or, or someone who, who's embodying that energy, they, they radiate that out from their physical body. They radiate out, radiate out this, this, this energy, this vibration, this frequency mm -hmm. that, whether you're teaching or not, helps transform people around you. Right. And I, I may be jumping ahead with this question, but can you tell us what, in, in Emery's point of view or what he's learned, what is the plan for humanity? He, uh, he, he speaks about this many, many times. And, and what the plan is, the, well, the plan is that we will eventually become a planet of light, meaning that at the moment we are a planet of darkness, right. at the moment we're a very warring planet, and we've always been a very warring planet, Mm -hmm. It's just it's just our destiny. That's you know when we have conflicts, we you know just like in kindergarten, if two little um, kindergartners disagree, they hit each other over the head or push you push each other or shove. It's just you know that's just where humanity is or some of humanity is at the moment. The that warring kind of energy, you know, wanting their their will and how they get that resolved is is through violence or argument or pushing or shoving whatever. But what plan is, is that eventually we will move out of that adolescent kindergarten stage, that humanity will move into a more wise, more loving, more unified consciousness, and that eventually what will happen is that this planet will be very different than it is today. It will be a planet where children will be born, they will be born under a very high frequency, they will, they will be responding to love because because love will be in the air. They will be responding to the light because light will be present. They will be responding to the joy, to the bliss, to the wisdom. So, and that's a bit down the road, mm -hmm. but we're in the process. We're in the process of moving towards that. Okay, we do have to take a quick little studio break here, William, but we do want to remind our listeners that we're speaking with William van Holst, who's the representative of Imre Valion, who is the author of the book The Way of the Spiritual Warrior, The Timeless Path to Enlightenment, amongst some superb other books which we will list below for the benefit of our readers. But when we come back after this break, we do want to get into some of the techniques that Imre Valion speaks about and also his, his position that he says that we're not to quit the world but to meet God head on. So we do want to talk about that the moment we come back. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this break. Hi, 
I'm Angel Rosa Grady, and I'm here to talk to you tonight about the work that I've done for the past 20 years, being a reader of the Akashic Records, predominantly. I've evolved to this work through many years of meditation and uh, being taken to other worlds and found that we all have a library in spirit that contains our soul's journey through all of our lifetimes on this planet and others. Through my work, I enjoy helping other people find their soul purpose, look at their spirit, help them through their challenges, understand their relationships, and guide them to fulfill their highest soul purpose. I've written two books on this subject. One's called The Time of Change, and those were predominantly group sessions that we did when people had bigger spiritual questions for the problems in their lives, such as, uh, what about the financial collapse? What about uh, 2012? What about healing? What happens when people commit suicide? Things like this that became the basis for uh, group sessions that began in 2009 and continue to this day. The first book, A Time of Change, deals with questions that happened before 2012, and some leading into what would happen after. And the second book, The Nature of Reality, deals with questions people asked about consciousness, what is God, what's the origin of creation, what, is it, what about time and dimensions, what about dreams, why do we dream, and love and miracles and topics such as that. I'm also a personal Akashic Record consultant, and I'm also a business consultant through the Akashic Records. I feel these ways of going into the records and helping people in their personal lives and in their business adds an extra extra sacred dimension to their life here. If you're interested in seeing more about my work, you can go to angalrose.com or worldofempowerment.com. Thank you. Well, welcome back to our show. We're talking to William von Holst today, who is a representative of Imre Valian in Imre's book, The Way of the Spiritual Warrior. We were having a wonderful conversation, Ahanu. So, Ahanu, we are interested in the techniques that Imre teaches in his training, and we do want to talk about the training a little bit, too. So, if you could maybe start with what is Imre's threefold training of the warrior and then some of the possible breathing exercises he may teach or what you think is probably the best thing for people to know right now. This is a chapter in the book which I find very helpful for people. He talks about a vehicle with four tires and what he and this is part of what we said in the first half of the show is that when you understand who you are and, and the worlds that are within you then you're better able to to become balanced. You're better able to, to really be of service, not just to yourself, but as service to others. So these four tires on this vehicle, one tire is your physical body, which we all have. Another tire is your vital energy, your etheric body. Another tire is your astral or emotional or psychic body. And another tire is your mental body. So we have these four aspects of our personality and what most of us do is that we're kind of driving this vehicle on one or two or three tires. We could be very mental and and physical, so we're driving on those two tires and the other tires are not even touching the road. So what Emery teaches is that to balance so that all four of the aspects of the personality are balanced, they're not working against each other, so you're when you're balanced with your physical body, your etheric body, your emotional body, your mental body, then the vehicle is firmly on the road, all four tires are touching the ground, and then the true driver of that vehicle is not your mental body or your emotional body or your physical body even, but that true driver of that vehicle is your soul itself. So when you're, when you're balanced, your tires are on the ground, the soul can really step in and, and drive that vehicle and drive the vehicle as the soul's will or the soul's needs or the soul's responsibility. So it's very, very different than the way most of us operate. Mm, mm, mm. 
Mm-hmm. That's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. I, I like that analogy, actually, because it's very easy to understand the vehicle with the four tires because we all know those people who are very left brain or, or indeed right brain or they're not grounded or they're way too f- too um, practical and have no spiritual concepts whatsoever. So we can understand those polarities. And when you talk about them being like a vehicle with four tires, it makes it very easy to understand. And then the driver becomes that higher spiritual unfolding. And, this, and essentially the the driver, I mean, the soul is driving the vehicle anyway, or as Emery says, you, you, you don't have a soul, you are the soul. So what that means is that your soul is here. Your soul is is in this incarnation, is, is is experiencing what you're experiencing. But when the personality is so dominant, when the person, especially if something someone is really mentally focused, meaning all their all their vibration is is mental thinking, 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 deciding with a lower rational mind, the soul has very little impact because there's there's no space. For the soul to come in, or if someone is extremely emotional, like an artist or, or, you know, someone with, you know, as you said, a, a right brain person, then the same thing. The soul, even though it's present, is not able to to have a relationship with that person or a, a communication with that person because the the energy of that emotional body is so strong. And same thing if someone's really physical an athlete or, or someone very, very practical and everything is just kind of exactly what you see. Same thing, the soul is not able to, to communicate. So sometimes what happens is that the, the soul can go to radical extremes. The soul can create an accident. The soul can cause disease. The, the soul can, can do something to, to interfere in that thickness so that there is a begin, beginning of a communication. So Emery says that actually in crisis, a lot of times what happens is that there is there's a little space for the soul to come in to begin to, to have a relationship with that personality or begin to communicate with that personality. Right. Right, and, and you do, or Emery does mention diseases in his book. Can you talk about diseases and where they come from? And then I'd like you, if you could, could we go to what would be a first step for people to begin to awaken in a balanced way? Well, diseases is a very complex subject, of course. And there are, of course, there diseases can be karmic, meaning that, and this is part of, we have lived thousands and thousands of times on this planet. So we have created good karmas and we've created bad karmas. So part of what a disease or someone who who is struggling with with a difficult disease part of it could be that it's a karma that is getting resolved from a prior incarnation or that the soul in this lifetime has chosen to to struggle with this disease to help burn off a karma so it's it's a bit bad for the personality but for the soul it's it's a it's a release which is a very different way of course of looking at it but but diseases also can be a result of not being in balance, meaning that when you're driving that vehicle and you're always driving on one tire or another tire, you're kind of skidding through the roads very erratically, and because you're not balanced, diseases pop up. And what, what he does say, though, is that when you are, when you are balanced, when that soul is 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 part of that driver in that of that vehicle then the your be, being balanced means that you're in harmony and harmony means that you have unless it's karmic you have less and less diseases you have less and less um, conflicts to deal with within right okay so in in Emer's training then um, if I was to go for the very first time, what would I encounter? That's the first question. And then I want to know with this book, this is his new book, The Way of the Spiritual Warrior, is that a beginning for people? These these books are very powerful. And 
the reason they're very powerful is because they, they're very practical mm -hmm. and they're based on truth. They are, all these books are really coming from Emory teaching a group of people. We have retreats. We have retreats in Europe. We have retreats in New Zealand. We used to have retreats um, all over the world. Emory's turning 76 this year. He's slowing down a little bit. But what these books come from is Emory teaching to a group of people. And Emory, because he's so tuned in in his consciousness, what he does is he, he feels where the group is vibrating or he feels what the group needs to know. So he, he speaks an hour, an hour and a half to, to, to that need. And okay. then what these books are is they're, they're, kind of, they're a compilation of, of various talks that are based on a single subject like the spiritual warrior. So they're, they're very practical and they're really meant to help people who are on the path. So to answer your question, the, the book, The Way of the Spiritual Warrior, which you can get at soundinglight.com, that's soundinglight.com, is a wonderful first step because it gives you a very clear idea of who you are and what is possible. And what also is very beautiful about this book in particular is that there are many, many techniques, uh, practical techniques that you can actually practice yourself. And some of these techniques, there's actually a, a little quote at the bottom, there are particular mantras. You can go to your website, you can look up this, this mantra, and you can hear Emery speaking the mantra, which gives you the, the correct pronunciation and the correct quality of it. So there's enormous powerful, simple, practical ways that you can begin to uh, begin to tune in, begin to, to really feel, as I said before, what it is is that the first step is really to become aware of your soul. The first step is really to, to learn how to become balanced. So all four tires are on the road. When you're balanced, then the soul itself can really be in your consciousness, be, be a, a real friend, be uh, available and, and interconnected with everything that happens mm. in your life. I want to ask you, William, about these techniques because I know from, from my own experience being a TM meditator for many, many, many years that you, you actually evolve past techniques. In other words, I believe now that techniques are a stepping stone. They're, they're helpful to get you to some kind of a place of realization. And the techniques that Imre teaches there are, they're mostly, they seem to be breathing techniques or techniques of that nature. And at the beginning of the interview, we talked about a lot of people waking up. Do you think that the techniques are actually necessary? And are all those people who are waking up missing something by not doing these techniques? I'll try to answer your question because it's a little complex to what all these techniques and of course breathing is, is one technique but there's also in the book there's also um, mantras there's repetitions of mantras mantras is working with the, the vibration of sound mm -hmm. as I said before it's sounding light what Emery says where there's sound there's light and when there's light there's sound so what this means is that Techniques are essentially the, the path to becoming enlightened or essentially the path to becoming a soul-infused personality. And then once, once, that soul, once you do become a soul-infused personality, once there is that strong connection with your soul, the techniques become completely different, meaning that at that point, the work is really that of a silence. I just was on a three-week retreat with Emory in Germany. The first two weeks, we did techniques. We did sound. We did um, chanting. We did visualization. And then the last week was a week of total silence. Gosh. Meaning that in silence, in silence, not just where you're not talking, also means you're not thinking, but there's even deeper levels of silence. So what that means is that these techniques take you to a certain quality of inner silence. When, when you're vibrating with that inner silence, 
then the, the worlds from within or the, the inner dimensions are, you can, you can communicate or they can communicate with you. And I don't mean communicate in words, but communicate in terms of similar vibrations or energies. You, you pick up the, the energies from the inner levels because you're not so busy within with all the stuff going on, thinking or emotions or dealing with the world or paying taxes. But there's, there's something within you that, that's still. And when it's still, then you're able to, to vibrate with an with a energy that's comparable to what's on the inner levels. All right, that makes me want to read this quote that you sent us from Imre. Uh, and he says, Many years ago when I was a teenager, I woke up and sensed a tremendous majesty inside me. It was like being in the presence of a king. Not a worldly king, but an awesome spiritual power, an awesome perfection that contained irresistible power, all knowledge and all possibilities. Once you have a vision of that divine being inside you and sense that it is somehow you, then at that moment your life changes forever. And you realize that there is only one thing that you can do in your life, become a spiritual warrior, a warrior for the divine being inside you. So can you explain, William, what a spiritual warrior actually is and how can people relate to that quote that I just read? Oh, it's a beautiful quote. Thank you. It is. Great. And it, th that quote, there's a lot in that quote because the, that first step, as I've been talking about, that first step of becoming a spiritual warrior, and there's many, many steps, but that first step is that you really become that true essence then, as Emery says in that quote, you become aware of this incredible majesty, of this incredible possibility of what could happen on this planet, or this incredible intelligence, or incredible love. And that, that incredible love, or incredible intelligence, is partly coming because you're connected to your true self, is also connected to the king itself meaning that there is this divine being, this, this true, you know, not a worldly king, but a, but a divine king. This divine king is here on the planet, has been on the planet for millions of years. That divine being is helping us through our adolescence or helping us out of our kindergarten stage of whopping each other over the head when we disagree. That, that, that divine being knows that, that each of these uh, you know, little kindergartners are actually very incredibly powerful potential beings. So through love, through, through patience, through, through helping each, each individual go through crisis, which we all go through, that, that divine king or that divine being is helping humanity become wiser or help that humanity through the stages of evolution so that eventually someday everyone on this planet will will be connected to that not just their divine being within but also that divine king himself or itself right, right. yeah yeah now i want to just remind people that we're speaking with william van holst and we're speaking about his representation of imre valion's book which is called the Way of the Spiritual Warrior, The Timeless Path to Enlightenment. And in that you talk uh, about, you actually go to, or he actually answers the question, who are we and why are we here? And we did a workshop a few years ago where that was the title of the workshop. And it was the single most successful and most sought after workshop that we've ever done, actually. And I think it represented that core question that people have it touched that 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 sensitive place about you know who are we and why are we here can you answer for our listeners broadly that question who are we and why are we here that that's a very powerful question because if you begin to to focus on it what very likely can happen is that like who am i when you first ask start to, to ponder that question, you may be thinking of, oh, I'm so-and-so, and I was born in you know, Chicago, and you know, these are my parents, and I do such-and-such. Such. So you're kind of thinking in a very 
very personal mm-hmm. personality way. Right. Mm-hmm. And then you then you move more into that question, who am I? And then there's another possibility that that presents itself and that you begin to touch upon, as you've been talking about in this interview, you begin to touch upon your real self. You know, as Emery says, the the personality is a mask, is a persona. Mm-hmm. It's a a mask that your technically your soul puts on one morning when it wakes up when you incarnate and you wear that mask for a day. So your soul is put on the mask of your personality right. and it wears that for a day. And then when you have completed that day or you completed your life, the, you know, whatever years that you've been blessed to be on this planet, then that soul takes that mask off. So what you have to, when you answer, begin to look at that question, you are that mask. So then you ask, well, what's behind the mask? Who am I truly? And, and then there's many layers beyond that as well because the soul is just a first step after you take off that mask. Your, your soul is on a journey itself, meaning that your soul has been journeying for a long, long time. It has a destiny. It has certain things that it needs to accomplish. Wearing masks, every time it incarnates is part of that, but then there's the the journey of the soul itself. And essentially what what this means is that the soul is is journeying back to its true home and periodically it has to incarnate into the physical plane because there's mysteries that happen here on the physical plane that don't happen at the level of the soul. And that's another whole subject. Right. Well, that sounds like a very interesting subject. Yeah. <laughs> now, in the last few minutes that we have, William, can you speak to us about the retreats that Imre Valion offers and where are they usually held and what would they cover? The retreats are in New Zealand in January and the so far the retreats have been in Germany in July into August. And they are 200 people coming together from all over the world and are working as a group. And that's very important to understand is that, yes, we come as individuals. Yes, we come from our various different backgrounds. We are each on our own spiritual path. But what Emory is really, really focusing on, and this is a new quality, this is part of being the West, this is part of this Aquarian age, but that we as a group are moving together, meaning that we are accomplishing we're trying to accomplish as a group what in the past has always been the work of an individual so that we as a group are, are working on the process of becoming enlightened. We're working on the, prop, um, the, the, the possibility that the group itself can be enlightened, meaning the group itself can bring down light and radiate a hundred times, a thousand times stronger than a single individual a, 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 radiant beam of light or, or an energy that will, can help change this planet. Does he, I guess this is a, I don't know if it's a great question to end with, but does he think we're going to make it, William? I mean, we have so many people that are depressed and suicidal these days that we hear from that just are having a very difficult time coping with the degree of, "Quote unquote negativity that seems to be surfacing all over the place, and 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 also acknowledging the forces that are doing their best to keep us in the dark. So, what what advice can you give for people about the planet? About um, I don't even want to use the word combating the forces of darkness because part of me feels that's within us as well. But what is Imor's opinion about all that. What Emory, what Emory says, and he said this quite often, what he's saying is that we're in the midst of this battle, and at the moment we're kind of at a standstill, meaning we're kind of, the, the forces of light and the forces of darkness are, are at this point uh, equal. Neck and neck is what I call it. Yeah, we're, we're in a tough battle, but what he also says and I feel this is the, the message of hope, is that more and more people are waking up and 
as more and more people wake up, there's more and more release of of destruction, or more and more release of violence, and more and more release of of the chaos. So it's an odd way of looking at it, but as as you witness the crazy things that are happening around the planet, you also has, also have to understand that's only half of what's happening. The other half is that there are people waking up. The other half that true knowledge or people really understanding what a human being is all about, really understanding what planet Earth is all about, really understanding the divine plan or the divine destiny, that, that has enormous impact on the inner levels. There's enormous help from the inner levels. There's enormous beings, very, very conscious beings, anywhere from the spiritual hierarchy to angelic, to um, archangelic beings who are right here helping us and very much wanting to to help mankind through this difficult period. So there even though it's you could say almost neck and neck, there's the still there's a hope. There's still the, the hope that, that we can truly um, that enough people can wake up, that enough people can hold the light within however they experience that, that enough groups can come together to really bring in that that light and that as more and more people are able to do that then the the dark kind of is diminished. The dark is losing its power. The dark, even though it 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 it's fighting, it's fighting for its life. Mm-hmm. There's, there's also the possibility. There's also the potential that that the, the goodness will will survive through it all. Hmm. Okay, well we do have to leave it there. We've been speaking with William van Holst, who's representing Imre Valion. And we've been speaking about his book, The Way of the Spiritual Warrior, The Timeless Path to Enlightenment. We will put all these links below for the benefit of people, including the links to Imre's various books. Now, we covered today, we started off speaking actually about light and how uh, it was divinely intelligent. And we spoke about uh, witnessing light manifesting on the physical plane. And William spoke about how uh, Imre speaks about spirituality as being a precise science. We spoke about the various levels and this, of the spiritual hierarchy and the spiritual plan for humanity that it is to become a planet of light. And then we went into some techniques and we spoke also about Imre saying that it wasn't to quit the world but to meet God head on. And then William gave us a, a beautiful a graphical image in our minds about ourselves being like the vehicle with four tires, one being the physical, the, the second being the vital, the third being the astral, and the fourth being the mental bodies, and how the driver really is our own soul. And then uh, we spoke about putting on and, of course, taking off the mask of personality and how we are working on the process of becoming enlightened, but that the actual workshops and retreats that Imre Valion does is actually w- working on that process of becoming enlightened for that group and thereby spreading it out to the rest of the world. And it, uh, we ended with really the the hope that enough people will wake up and that help is available. And one of the links, of course, that we want to send people to is soundinglight.com, which is Imre's publishing company. Is there anything else you want to add that would give us, bring us to a close, William? Well, there's also a website that we have for the group, and it's the FHL, F as in Frank, HL, Foundation for Higher Learning, that's the name of the group, dot org. So it's T H E, F as in Frank, hl.org and that gives you a link to, to the groups around the world to what Emory's about to what the school's about uh, you can actually on this link you can um, be connected to, to some of Emory's talks so it's a, it's a very powerful tool to, to help you understand who you are and uh, where, where we are all going that's fantastic very fantastic okay we were Delighted speaking with you today and hopefully activate those centers and the purification that might be involved on our way to enlightenment. Absolutely. Okay. Great. That's super. It's been an absolute pleasure. And we do look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you, William. Thank you. Bye-bye. 
You have been listening to Angel Rose and Ahanu on World of Empowerment Radio, your station for practical spirituality in a changing world.